Hey there, welcome back to yet another video on this channel. A lot of you have been requesting me to prepare some sessions on P2C1, P2C2 and P2C3. I love the names that you have given to such sessions. So let's call this session P2C1. In this session, we are going to learn how to draft claims for the questions given in the exams. Now keep in mind, the claims that you may come up with for such questions may not be good enough for real life patent applications uh, because the information that is given is not detailed enough. The time that you are left with is just not enough to draft a proper claims. And third, uh, the expectations from the patent office is not to see a perfect claim, but to judge whether you have the knowledge, whether you have the concepts uh, to understand how to present a claim. What is the structure of the claim? So before uh, getting into solving the questions, let's take a pause and revisit the structure of the claim. So a claim primarily has three components to it. First is a preamble. A preamble could be a method for doing something, a system for doing something, or an apparatus for something, right? Second is the transition which is nothing but comprising. The way we write it is wherein the method comprises, wherein the system comprises, or wherein the apparatus comprises. Third is the actual method steps or the system components or the apparatus elements to it. We write all these essential, non-essential elements one by one, separated by semicolon to give some structure, to give some feel to the method system apparatus that we are drafting. If you need to have more information than this, please visit this video on the channel. This will give you a lot more information about the basics of the claims. So with this basic in mind, let's solve some questions. So here is the first disclosure that is provided to us. Uh, Dr. Prabhu Deva has invented a liquid tank with liquid level indicator as shown below. Uh, various components have been shown there, uh, multiple markings have been placed. Let's understand what all components are there. So there is liquid tank, uh, liquid indicators are there, E1, E2, E3 are the emitters, R1, R2, R3 are the receivers, there are reflectors. Okay, so basically when uh, a ray is emitted from E1, it gets reflected by M1, again reflected by M1 and received by R1 and controller receives the signal received from R1 and displays the level which is L1 in this case and they have also provided that when the level goes below L3 uh, there is an alarm which notifies the user basically. Perfect. So we know that we have a method for measuring the liquid level in a tank or we have a system for measuring liquid level in a tank. So how do we approach this particular uh, question? How do we decode this question? So first is to identify the preamble. So preamble we have identified, this is nothing but the objective of it. Transition is transition. Next step is to write down all the components that we can see. So what all components do we have here? So first component is of course tank. Second is the, the three emitters that they have provided. Then we have three receivers that they have provided. And then we have a set of reflectors, we have a controller, we have a display and we have an alarm. So this is how our basic claim looks like. But have we done any justice to provide what is inventive about this invention? We have just list down all the components which are there. So let's refine it further by connecting all these components so that we are able to identify the objective of the invention. So how do we do so? So we start putting few words which are specific to claims and we also start putting some more information about each of these elements. For instance, what is the position or how do they interact with each other and how do they come up with the objective. So with such limitations, we may be able to justify the uh, inventive step of the invention or novelty of the invention. So this is how our second version would look like. A liquid level monitoring system comprising a tank, a plurality of optical emitters. Now why have we used such term? See the invention talks about three emitters. 
but we don't want our invention to be restricted to just three. So we come up with a term which can include any number of emitters, hence the usage of a plurality of optical emitters. We go ahead and talk about further details like where it is positioned and what is the functionality. How we write it? Emitters positioned above the tank and where in each emitter of the plurality of optical emitters, it is very important to follow the antecedent. We introduced a plurality, now we use the plurality because we have already introduced it. Is configured to emit optical signals downward. The functionality of it. You may or may not write it, but then I thought that let's use the information that they have given to us. Similarly, we talk about the optical receivers also. A similar usage of term of plurality of optical receivers to keep it broad. Where are they positioned? And we also talk about that wherein each receiver corresponds to a respective emitter because that's how one to one pairing is done. Moving on, we have a set of reflectors. Here you could have written a set of reflectors or a plurality of reflectors. Uh, I chose the word a set of reflectors because they, they use the set of reflectors in the disclosure. Now again we define where they are placed. So they are placed on opposite walls of the tank and wherein each pair is positioned at a different height. They have given that three levels of height right? to reflect signals between corresponding emitter receiver pair. One reflect, reflect, go, receive, right? So the entire functionality of the reflector. Then comes the controller and the functionality of it. So a controller is connected to said receiver, the receiver or the receivers, wherein the controller determines liquid level based on the signals as it receives from the corresponding receivers, right? So we understand that if we have received from R1, the level will be L1, received from R2, level will be L2. But we have not talked about L1, L2, L3 because we would want to keep it broad enough to cover n number of levels that we can define. Uh, then they have a display unit also, which is connected to the controller as shown in the diagram. And what, what does it display? It displays the uh, level indication. And uh, finally, the important aspect that they wanted us to say is about the alarm functionality. What is that? And again, alarm connected to the controller wherein the alarm activates or gets activated when the liquid level falls below a predefined level. So we are not writing L3 here. What are we writing? A predefined level. Because L3 is just one example that they have given. So in such cases, we always write predefined. Now that predefined could be L2 also, predefined could be L4 also. So this is how your apparatus claim would look like. Now you can have n versions of it, but then the idea is to ensure that you have given the entire structure and also provided the inventive step or inventive functionality in the claim. The structure has the preamble. We have the preamble here. We have transition phase and we have separate elements or components also. Another syntax that you need to remember is after every element or after every step, you need to have semicolon. It's a single sentence that we are writing. Full stop comes at the end. And before the last element or last step, you need to have end after the component. Right? So these are important syntax or structural uh, concepts that you need to keep your mind. Uh, this is good when you get evaluated for the examination. Now remember, they have asked you to come up with a process version of the claim also. Now it's the same thing what you have done for the apparatus version. We need to do the same for process also. We start with the, the preamble, a method for doing something. In our case, a method for monitoring liquid level. Then the transition, wherein the method comprises. And then we write all the process steps. Now when you see the diagram, can you jot down what all steps are happening? So the first step is emitting optical signals. Second is getting reflected by the respective pair of reflectors. Third is receiving by the receiver. Fourth is receiving by the controller. Then some processing happens. And then display actually displays the liquid level and an alarm in case the liquid level goes below a predefined level notifies the user. So these are the steps. So this is how you write the steps. But now when you see Again, we have not provided any functional details as such or any connections as such. So this may not be a appropriate claim which can uh, kind of justify the 
uniqueness or inventive step or novelty of the invention. So let's add more details and limitations to this version of the claim. How do we do so? Let's write this. A method for monitoring liquid level wherein the method comprises. First step is emitting optical signals from a plurality of emitters and we write about emitters. Then we say reflecting the signals using a pair of reflectors wherein the pair of reflectors are arranged at whatever heights that we spoke about earlier. Then receiving reflected signals using receivers. Processing said received signals at a controller wherein the controller identifies the receiver from whom the controller has received the signal and accordingly a level is identified. Thereafter we display, so basically displaying the liquid level using a display right? and then alarm, generating an alarm when the processed signal indicates that the liquid level has fallen below a predefined level. So this is how we provide all the limitations, we provide all the functional connections between the steps, between the system elements to justify the novelty and uniqueness and the inventive step of our claim. All in all, please remember the structure, preamble, transition and elements, semicolons and, and full stop. Method claim should start with ing form which is called gerund form verb ing gerund form right that's how you should write now in few of the questions they have asked justify now how do you justify you you need to indicate that i have included a set of emitters i have included a set of receivers and i have also included a set of reflectors which are positioned at different levels and based on the arrangement the controller is able to receive the signals and decide what level it is. So because of this limitations, because of this interfunctionality between the components, I am able to provide the output to the user. So this is how you can provide justification for your claim, how your claim is actually novel and having an inventive step. Good enough? There was another option given in the question paper for folks from chemistry, pharma or biotech domain. Uh, I wanted to give it a try even though I am not an expert at it so that you understand how to decode the question and how to code your answer. So here is the question. So they have given a starting compound, they take this compound through some process to get an intermediate compound too, then again something happens, some process happens, you get an intermediate uh, compound 3, uh, those brackets may technically mean something, uh, maybe stable, unstable, I don't know. And then finally, uh, that also is given some solution or some processing to get the final compound 4. Uh, this, is, uh, this is known as or this is called as a no novel compound 4 uh, and this is nothing but a preparation of the novel compound. Uh, they have provided the details about uh, each of the step and how each of the step leads to another step uh, and they ask us to draft two versions of the claim one is the product another another one is the process now process is already given to us and product is the product uh, so let's see if i can do some justice to uh, help you guys so uh, going by the same logic what will we do we will first identify the preamble the preamble is the preparation of novel compound transition is uh, comprising basically right and what are the method steps now because we are talking about process so first is of course receiving the compound one and they have uh, categorically mentioned that the starting material is solid at room temperature so wherein compound one is solid at room temperature uh, second step would be reacting the compound one with the step one that they have provided to obtain compound two right and then compound two, third step basically, reacting compound two with again the process step that they have provided to obtain compound three. And finally compound three is uh, processed in presence of ethanol to obtain compound four. So this would be the broadest four steps that you would write. Now this doesn't provide any uniqueness to our compound as such right or our preparation process. 
So how do we provide more limitations? So here are some rough limitations that I could think of. A process for preparing compound 4 comprising providing a compound of formula 1 wherein the compound of formula 1 is solid at room temperature reacting the formula 1 compound with HNMEO the whatever they have written there in a mixture of toluene and CH2Cl2 uh, wherein the reaction yields compound of formula 2. Then what happens? Treating compound 2 with NAH MDS in THF uh, wherein said treatment produces intermediate compound of formula 3. Uh, now since they have provided another limitation for this, so we can write that here wherein the compound of formula 3 is capable of recrystallization for high purity. Now finally reacting the compound of formula 3 with this ring that they have provided, I am sure there will be a name to it, uh, in presence of uh, ethanol uh, wherein said reaction yields compound of formula 4. So this is your process to come up with uh, novel compound 4. Uh, I am not sure how good uh, was my version of the claim but you get the gist. Moving on they have also asked about a product version of it. Now usually when you have been given a structure of a compound you usually write the definition of the structure basically it includes R, it includes H, it includes all that right. But in this case I am not able to understand how to write in that structure manner. So what I think uh, would work for me is I would write a product by process kind of a claim. So the way I would write is a compound of formula 4 obtained by the process comprising again I write reacting compound of formula 1 with the mixture that we have talked about treating compound 2 again with NAHM DS that we talked about in THF to obtain compound 3 and reacting compound 3 with the particular uh, element that they have given in presence of ethanol to obtain compound 4. So this gives us uh, our product by process claim. So we have both version, process version and product version. Uh, please remember all the patent office is doing here is, is evaluating whether you know how to structure a patent claim. The structure is the preamble, the transition phase, the elements the syntax like the semicolons and and full stop all this is very important when you get evaluated so please don't beat yourself overly to find out what could be the actual novelty here what could be the actual inventive step here come up with the structure plug in all the elements plug in all the process steps make sure the structure is nice make sure all the syntax elements are put in there the semicolons and then the full stop and see if everything is making sense. If somebody can read your claim and imagine the product, imagine the method steps in their mind. So I hope this helped you to understand what you need to do. Drop in questions if you have any. Take care. Bye-bye.